Hello. Hi. How's it going? Hope everybody's well. This will not take long. Uh, it is lunch and I am starving and I want to get a taco. So this is about a few things. One, um, I really, really, really like fire puns. They're kind of great. Second is I like a good Seinfeld reference. Um, equally as great. Third is I kind of wanted to show some techniques while I was dialing in um, a production implementation of a fire resource server. Um, and taking that from the laptop to production and using some tooling to do so. Um, so I kind of want to show the, 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 the upfront stuff while I was developing it and then second um, to kind of show how you can put it in a CD, CI CD pipeline and kind of, you know, you know, prove that it's still over time, prove it's still performing. So I call this the onion. Um, this is the layers that you put on as soon as the developer hands it to you from their container on their laptop. Right. So when we have to put something in production, it looks a little bit different. Usually we're fronting it with an API manager. Um, like API Gateway, uh, maybe Apogee or you know, Kong or IAM, whatever. Um, you're usually capping in it with something like that. Then you're usually going through another layer, which is the integration layer, so where you can you know, give yourself a, a, a chance um, in proxying those requests and doing things to them. Um, so you have a layer in between there, and then you've got maybe a load balancer, um, whether it's an application load balancer with EC2 or containers or otherwise. Then you've either got uh, a web stack here. We've got some web gateways, either on Nginx or Apache. They go all the way to the durable persistent store. So, um, so when it goes from the laptop to production, you've got to be able to prove a couple things. One thing is you want to prove like, okay, now that you put all this stuff and machinery in front of it, is it going to fall over? Um, and I, I kind of put that is, you know, when is the breaking point when I start getting 502s? When I can't handle the request. The second is kind of checking the latency um, between what the client sees as it comes in, that's one. Um, and then, you know, kind of mo not most importantly, but very important to us implementers is the integration latency in the middle. Or what have we introduced uh, as part of the penalty for that latency as it goes through? So with those two things, I wanted to show, um, I wanted to show Postman, uh, which everybody uses every day. Uh, it's definitely a tool that's well used and it's kind of become an operating system as of late. Um, it's really slick. It's just, I mean, I've seen this thing grow up quite a bit and um, it is just fascinating to see how, how much functionality has gone into it. But I want to kind of show you how it's built. This is the collection. This is a collection of calls that I want to do against my fire um, endpoint. Um, in the collection at the top level, you can specify some variables. Two of them that I put there was my API key and the fire endpoint. Now, if you're looking at the API key and you're writing it down, one, I'm very proud of you. Um, second is it'll probably go away here very quickly. But um, those are the two things that I specify as, as variables. So I can use this in a CI CD pipeline, as I'll show you later. It also never, you don't have to retype all that stuff as I, as I go through. And, and so there's my fire endpoint you can see. This is a get request thing. It's the metadata conformance statement on the fire resource server. Um, you can see that um, that call I'll go ahead and hit this send, and you should be able to see that come back. Um, yeah, so that's basically a request. Um, you can also, um, see there's our 200. Also in inspecting it, you know, when you write this request, you can, you can look at the console on the bottom and see your headers as they come across. You can also specify tests. Um, there was a test hidden in there. I just kind of did a real quick look up for um, a 200 coming back. Um, and you can kind of see that here in our next one. So that was a base just get call on and usually are always unauthenticated metadata endpoint. Here's one to create a patient. Here you can see the URI. We're going out for the patient resource. Um, our fire endpoint is obviously um, a precursor to that. You look in the headers, we'll be able to see the XAPI key. So that's the key that we're going to provide. Important to creating a patient is the body. And this is where you can see some really cool tooling that is around Postman in general, which is the ability to randomly generate stuff. And here I randomly generate a last name and a first name, which is super cool because if you put this in iteration, it'll generate multiple patients of the same with different names. And there's tons of them. There's like, you know, genders, birth dates, all there's just a slew of random helpers in there, which is, makes it really, really cool. You can also do, spec, do some tests. This one is, uh, these are canned on the, on the snippets on the right. I'm not a genius at this, but 
If I do want to log something, I can, just like a web console. I do put a timeout in here. Um, I do that for the CLI run, but, um, and I'll show you kind of in the, in the next thing is, I do put a timeout in there because sometimes I'll get some problems when I do a create and do another one. I'll get some rate limiting from AWS or something. So I always put a little bit of a, a tick in there. I also did it here so that um, when you see us run the runner on the next one, you can see it go a little bit slower because it does go pretty fast sometimes depending on your setup. So yeah, so that is that. You can see all the headers and that we just created patient number 8283 with that particular call. So that sets us up for, now that we've got that collection built, you can now execute a runner. And I went into dark mode, so like all you vampires were like, oh, please turn it. So we're in dark mode. We're also, we're gonna run the collection. Um, you can see here the number of iterations you can specify. You can also put a delay. That's the delay I programmatically put in the collection. You can also add one right there. Um, when you run this, you can run it in a specific order, which I didn't know you could do that. Um, I always was worrying about writing my collections in a certain order, so I need to create a bunch of patients, then get everything in a bunch of patients, I can do that. So here we hit it, and it looks really cool. Um, dazzle your friends. Um, and as we get through this, looks like we're going through five iterations here. It'll run your tests. It'll, that you, you load it, it'll run. Um, we're doing some pretty heavy hits here. As we create patients, we're actually doing a search after that. So we create a bunch of patients and we search and it returns all, returns all with the limit of whatever you're, um, you're tuned to do. But that's it. So we got 30 that passed. Um, and that, that kind of shows, uh, yeah, that kind of shows just running a runner in Postman. Now next is the, is the star of our show. So take a look at our collection yet again. Um, you can see that we wrote all of these collections. Looks like we got like eight of them. So we got eight requests. We're gonna export those to a file. So once we export them, they export in JSON and we can check that into GitHub. You and I can, you know, if we have a, a similar endpoint, similar setup, we can just keep adding these tests on here and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and we can manage it over change control. But here's how we run it programmatically. Um, this is using Newman and we run it and do we run it to the file that's right there? And we also tell the number of iterations. This is verbose for you right now. I typically don't do that. And then you can throw those environment variables that we had specified in the beginning to um, uh, it, it, as command line flags too. So when we run this in CICD, those things could change. We can pull those out of a secrets manager or something. So now I'm gonna hit it. Here it goes. It's, um, it'll go through, what do we do? Five? It'll go through the same rigmarole it did in the collection runner. Um, and it'll hit that pretty hard. You can also like rep, you know, I've used it mostly for, you know, generating a bunch of data and, and kind of making things break. Um, but you can also, you know, do it to multifaceted, load up a test suite, right? You can pop bundles on the, you can load images or whatever you gotta do to, you know, this could be your seed data or whatever, but. I've got a few problems here. You can see that when I run it through the CLI, I'm getting it forbidden, but when I ran it through the collection, it was just fine. So I got something to look into. Um, that's kind of it. That's kind of running it, um, you know, the, the three-step approach. And what do we got next? Yeah, so if you're disappointed, you didn't see any outcomes there. I think I wanted to add them. One, I didn't see any 502s there. Um, when I've been using this tooling in the past, um, and I have a bunch of containers sitting in front of a load balance or sitting behind a load balance or servicing requests, um, some sort of, you know, proxy or whatever. Um, I pay really close attention to 502s, meaning the resource goes away. We were able to scale that out, pump up the boxes, um, add more, you know, dial them down, tune those so that, you know, the, the breaking point for 502 actually goes away and the service is always there. And then we've got latency numbers to argue about. Um, you can always, and then you can, paste that in Jajira. You can put it in your Jira and close it so it looks like you did your job. Um, so with that, that kind of wraps that up um, and, and kind of shows you Postman, shows you, you know, how to write some collections, how to drop it to a file and then run it through this CLI through Newman. Pretty simple step and then you can manage it all in, in some sort of GitHub repository. So that's about it. Here's a, here's a slide where, you know, how conceited do you have to be to 
to put a picture, hovering picture of yourself over yourself. I guess the disconceited, that's how it got to be. Not intentional, but anyway. Big month for us. Um, every year we donate carts to Mass Ioneer. And um, this week, actually, where this is the middle of December, we're getting our, our 2020 cart um, out to those kids at Mass Ioneer. We're working on 2021. Um, so if you're interested in gaming and you're interested in giving kids something to do while they're waiting um, and fasting, by the way, um, to, to get treatment, um, give us a look, make a donation, and uh, it's, it's fun. It's a, it's a good time, and I'll miss this year taking the day off just to go play, um, but it's certainly it's still a lot of fun um, to see this program being executed at these places. So. Yeah, that's it. Um, anything else? I think I'm 